Does it matter if we get our fats from oil or from whole, unprocessed forms of fat, like nuts and seeds? Is one healthier than the other? This is actually a super common question. We see it in the comments all the time. But I've personally never seen someone on social media systematically go over the science on this issue. So that's what we're doing today. Now, of course, there's many sources of fat. There's dairy, there's fish, there's dark chocolate. And we actually have content on a number of those. But for today's video, we're going to focus specifically on this question of oil versus nuts and seeds, just because it's a common question we get. So let's start by looking at a trial that focused exactly on this question. They compared the effect of consuming almonds, whole almonds, to almond oil. So purifying just the fat fraction of the almonds. Their rationale was these benefits that we keep seeing of nuts in scientific studies, is that due to something in the fat fraction or is it something else? And they actually hypothesized that the fat was only part of it. So they expected the whole almonds to outperform the oil, which is a really interesting departure point. So they took their volunteers and they replaced about half of the fat in their normal diets with fat from almonds. So they were getting about 29% of their calories from fat before the trial, and they had them replace about 14% of their calories with almond fat. Half of the volunteers did it with whole almonds and the other half with almond oil, but both getting the same amount of almond fat, which means necessarily that the fiber can't be matched, right? Since fiber is only in the whole almonds, oil doesn't contain any fiber. And in fact, the group eating whole almonds was getting 36% more fiber overall in their diet than the group on almond oil. After six weeks on these two diets, they looked at their lab work. And these investigators were mainly interested in lipids, things like cholesterol, triglycerides, ApoB. We'll look at other metrics in a second. So they saw a reduction in triglycerides, total cholesterol, and LDL cholesterol in both groups. And HDL cholesterol went up in both, with no significant difference between them. So the changes were similar in both groups. Now, these differences were fairly small, 14% reduction in triglycerides, 6% reduction in LDL cholesterol. So pretty modest. And in fact, ApoB, which is a better overall metric of cardiovascular risk, did not significantly change comparing before versus after the trial or comparing between the two groups. Last thing this trial did was a test tube assay of LDL oxidizability. So basically measuring how prone their LDL lipoproteins were to being oxidized in this in vitro test tube assay. And there was no significant difference comparing before versus after the trial or between groups. I'm a little skeptical of how meaningful these test tube assays of oxidation are. We've talked about that recently. But anyway, this was the result, no significant difference. So the researchers concluded that their results suggest the benefit of almonds seems to be mainly mediated by components in the oil fraction, at least for these metrics they measured, like lipids. We'll look at a lot of other stuff, including cancer and diabetes in a second. And they also write the additional fiber in the almonds didn't seem to confer any further benefits. Again, just with respect to lipids, just with respect to what they measured. Now, this was a pretty small trial, 24 volunteers only, and only 22 finished. So one could almost say a pilot trial. So we definitely want to look at other studies to see if this is reproducible. Another trial gave one group peanut oil and another group peanuts and peanut butter. Would be nicer if it was all peanuts, maybe a cleaner experiment, but this is what they did. And they had a third group on olive oil. They don't specify if it was virgin or refined. And they had a fourth group that was a control group on a standard American diet. All three experimental groups, so peanut oil, peanuts, and olive oil, all lowered total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and ApoB compared to standard American diet. Not very surprising. And there was no significant difference between the three. So none of them were clearly better than the others. Okay, what about other metrics, other parameters of health aside from lipids. One trial split people in three groups and gave them diets enriched with virgin olive oil, walnuts, or almonds. And there was no significant difference between them in body weight, blood pressure, fasting glucose, or inflammatory markers. They also looked at lipids in this trial and the two nut groups had lower total cholesterol than the olive oil group, although LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, 
APOB B and LP little a did not significantly differ. Another trial put people on Mediterranean diets, either with extra nuts or extra virgin olive oil. And this was part of the Predimed trial, which you may have heard about, and they measured a lot of parameters. Both diets lowered blood pressure, fasting glucose, fasting insulin, and insulin resistance, with no clear difference between them. There were only a couple differences between them. For example, the diet with extra olive oil seemed stronger at lowering C-reactive protein, an inflammatory marker, while the diet with extra nuts was stronger at lowering triglycerides. We're going to look at two more trials real quick before we get to bigger things like heart attacks and cancer. One trial compared nuts to canola-enriched cereal, and there was no significant difference between them in any parameter, including body weight, blood pressure, fasting glucose, fasting insulin, or lipids, like cholesterol, triglycerides, ApoB. And finally, there's a meta-analysis looking at trials comparing flaxseed oil to whole flaxseeds, and they were mainly looking at inflammatory markers. Whole flaxseeds significantly lowered C-reactive protein, but flaxseed oil did not. But when they looked at IL-6, interleukin-6, another inflammatory marker, it was the other way around. Only the flaxseed oil lowered it significantly. And for TNF-alpha, a third inflammatory marker, neither one did. So this kind of aligns with the picture we've seen so far for these blood markers. Not a ton of difference between oils and nuts and seeds. Occasionally, one is better for one metric, the other for another, but no clear superiority where one is consistently edging out the other. Okay, but so far, all of these trials we've looked at are shorter term and looking at what we call biomarkers, blood levels of different parameters. That's by design. That's what they were designed to do. But what about other things that take much longer, years and years? So not just the levels of lipids in the blood, but the actual number of heart attacks. The only trial looking at these longer term outcomes and comparing oil to whole nuts is Predimed. They recruited over 7,000 volunteers and the trial lasted for almost five years. And they measured actual risk of heart attacks, strokes, etc. So very rare scope and scale for a randomized trial in nutrition. We get one of these once in a blue moon. So their volunteers were randomized to either a Mediterranean diet with extra virgin olive oil or with extra nuts. And there was a third group, a control group, that received advice to reduce their overall fat intake. But in reality, they barely did. After two and a half years of these diets, they looked at the participants' carotid arteries using some imaging techniques. And it looked like the group on the extra nuts might have a bit less plaque in some areas of arteries, while in other areas, there was no significant difference between the groups. But by the end of the trial, the almost five years of follow-up, both Mediterranean diet groups reduced the risk of cardiovascular events like heart attacks or strokes. The diet with nuts reduced it by 28%, and the diet with extra olive oil by 31% both significantly lower than control, but no significant difference between them. So neither was clearly better. Okay, what about other aspects of health beyond cardiovascular disease? Well, Predimed also reported risk of type 2 diabetes, and the number of people who developed diabetes was cut approximately in half in both Mediterranean diet groups compared to controls, and there was no significant difference between them. They also reported the numbers of some types of cancer, which is a pretty rare outcome to come out of a randomized trial. In the control group, the number of diagnoses of malignant breast cancer went up with time. It was still a small percentage of women overall, but of course, the number of diagnoses tends to go up with time. In the group on the Mediterranean diet with extra olive oil, there was a significant reduction, almost 70% lower risk. And the group with nuts was somewhat in the middle, with no significant difference compared to control or to the olive oil group. A couple of caveats to this study. It's a secondary analysis, so it's not what Predimed was primarily designed to measure. Also, the total number of cancers was low, which is good news, of course, for the women, but lowers statistical power and lowers confidence. So we don't want to overinterpret this. I would say these results suggest the Mediterranean diet with extra olive oil reduced the risk of malignant breast cancer compared to controls, with no clear superiority between the olive oil and nut groups. Lastly, Predimed also reported 
on cognitive function and how it changes with age. And there was a decline in cognitive ability with time in the control group, with both the Mediterranean diet groups seeming to help prevent that decline. Sometimes only the olive oil group was statistically significant, sometimes only the nuts group. Does that sound familiar? Just to show you what that looks like, this is the memory category. Controls got worse compared to before the trial, and both Mediterranean diet groups look better overall, but only the nuts group reached statistical significance. Here's frontal cognition. Similar controls got worse. Both Mediterranean diets look better, but now only the olive oil group reached statistical significance. And finally, global cognition. Again, controls worse, both Mediterraneans better, only olive oil reaching statistical significance. So again, no obvious advantage where one consistently looks better. And even these small differences might just come down to statistical power. So this is the story overall from the evidence I've seen, which has limitations. It's good to bear that in mind. So this could always change in the future. That's always the case. But so far, I haven't seen any convincing evidence that one is clearly better, period, comparing these predominantly unsaturated oils like peanut, olive oil, canola oil, flaxseed oil, to the unprocessed whole nuts and seeds. So it comes down to personal preference. Some people prefer to exclude oils. Some like to include oils. As long as the overall calories are reasonable, I don't see a compelling scientific reason to discourage either preference. Happy to lean in either direction if the evidence suggests it in the future. I think this topic is really interesting beyond just the specific question of oil versus nuts and seeds for the overarching lessons it teaches us. I've heard people say, well, to make the oil, you have to remove the fiber. So you're removing something good. The end product has to be worse. Or for example, this is very common. Well, the nuts and seeds are natural. The oil is processed and unnatural. So it has to be worse for health. But the evidence so far doesn't support that. If one was clearly worse, we'd expect to see a consistent difference in these tests, either outcomes or biomarkers. So maybe there's a small difference. Maybe it's very contextual. Or maybe there's no difference. That's why it's important to always look at the actual evidence, because science can surprise us, and often does. Here's an in-depth look at the health effects of consuming canola oil. And for people who have questions about reversal of heart disease, especially on low-fat diets, this whole question, we covered it here. Check those out. I'll see you over there.